Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. And please remember to click thumbs up if this video is helpful to you. That helps other students to find the video. If you're looking for more videos on graph theory, you can always search for Ms. Hearn graph theory. In this video, we're going to talk about minimum spanning trees and Kruskal's algorithm. In a previous video, we talked about spanning trees. A spanning tree for a graph is a subgraph that includes every vertex of the original, and it has to be a tree. So here on the left, we have the original graph. And on the right, we have an example of a spanning tree. It has the characteristics that it includes all six of the original vertices. It's a connected graph and it doesn't have any circuits. In other words, it doesn't loop back around to itself. So this is considered a tree. We observed in other videos that the number of vertices in a tree minus one is going to be equal to the number of edges. Notice that in the graph on the right, we have six vertices and five edges. So it fits that characteristic as well. We've also in a previous video looked at this example where we were asked to find three different spanning trees for the given graph. On the left is the original graph. It has five vertices and on the right are some of the possible spanning trees for the graph. They each have five vertices and four edges and no circuits. We're going to be finding spanning trees for weighted graphs. A graph with numbers on the edges is called a weighted graph. The numbers on the edges are weights. They can represent distances or times, dollar amounts, or various other quantities in various applications where we use graph theory. We will be looking for a special kind of spanning tree that has a minimum total weight called a minimum spanning tree. Before we look at how we find a minimum spanning tree, let's look at a few spanning trees and their weights. One of the spanning trees for this graph is given on the right. It includes the four vertices from the original graph connected by three of the original edges. It has no circuits and it's connected, so it's a tree. And since it includes all of the vertices from the original graph, it's a spanning tree. But is it a minimum spanning tree? We don't know that yet, but we can calculate its weight. It has edges of four, three, and one, so it has a total weight of eight. Here's another example of a spanning tree for the original graph. It has the same number of vertices and edges and the same characteristics of being connected and having no circuits. And it also has a weight of eight. Five plus one plus two is a total weight of eight. Here's another spanning tree for the same graph. It meets all the requirements of a spanning tree and its weight is five plus four plus three or 12. And here's yet another example of a spanning tree. This one has weight four plus three plus two, which is equal to nine. Now, if we were to just look at these four spanning trees, it would appear that the minimum spanning tree or a minimum spanning tree would have a weight of eight. But how can we know for sure? Well, there's a procedure called Kruskal's algorithm, which gives us the exact steps we need to find a minimum spanning tree. The steps are first choose any edge with the minimum weight out of all the edges on the graph. Next, choose any edge with the minimum weight from those you haven't selected. It's possible that the two edges you chose so far are not connected, but by the end we'll have a connected graph. Step three is to continue to choose edges of minimum weight from those not yet selected, but don't select any edge that would create a circuit because remember trees don't have circuits. And we're gonna repeat step three until the subgraph that we construct connects all the vertices of the original graph. So let's use Kruskal's algorithm to find a minimum spanning tree for the graph we were just looking at. Step one, we're first gonna choose any edge with a minimum weight. In this case, the lowest weight edge has weight one. That's the edge AC. Step two says to choose the next edge with minimum weight from those not yet selected. We have edges of weight two, three, four, and five left, so we're gonna select edge AB, which has weight two. Step three says to continue to choose edges of minimum weight from those not yet selected, except do not select any edge that creates a circuit in the subgraph. We have edges of weights three, four, and five left. The lowest of those is BC with a weight of three, but we can't select that one because it forms a circuit. It loops back around to those edges we've already selected. So we have to skip over the three and select the edge of weight four from C to D. Step four says that we repeat until the subgraph connects all vertices of the original graph, which means we're done. 
because we already have the edges in red that connect all of the vertices in the original graph. So on the right, I've pulled those edges out and that is our subgraph. And since all the vertices are connected and there are no circuits, it's a tree. So we have found our minimum spanning tree and its weight is four plus one plus two, which is seven. A graph can have more than one minimum spanning tree. So we're going to do this second exercise where we use Kruskal's algorithm to find two different minimum spanning trees. So I have the same graph and I've copied it, one on the left and one copy on the right. And we're going to do the same procedure following all the rules of Kruskal's algorithm, but in some cases we might make a different choice. So for step one, first we're gonna choose any edge with minimum weight. The graph that we're analyzing has four edges of minimum weight, weight one. On the left here, I'm going to make the choice of choosing AB, but that wasn't the only choice I could have made that would stick with Kruskal's algorithm. On the right, I chose instead AD. Let's see what happens. We're going on to step two. We're gonna choose the edge with minimum weight from those not yet selected. We have weights one, two, and three remaining on the left. And so I still need to select an edge of weight one. So I'm going to select BC. And on the right, again, I have edges of weights one, two, and three. So one is the least. So I have to select another edge of weight one. So I decide to select BD. Now we move on to step three. We're gonna continue to choose edges of minimum weight from those not yet selected, but do not select an edge that creates a circuit in the subgraph. So on the left, I decided to select BD. And on the right, at first I thought I might select AB, but I noticed that that would actually create a circuit. So we can't do that. So instead I decided to select BC. Now let's go back to the graph on the left. In the graph on the left, I still have one edge left of weight one. So I thought about selecting that one, but again, that would form a circuit. So we can't do that. So now I have to move on to an edge of weight two. I thought about selecting CD, but again, that would create a circuit. So I had to go ahead and select AF, the other edge of weight two. Now let's go back to the graph on the right. For the graph on the right, I have one edge left of weight one, but I can't select it for the same reasons we just saw. I can't create a circuit, so I can't select AB, but I can't select CD, the other edge of weight two either. I have to select AF in order to avoid making a circuit. Now let's go back to the graph on the left. On the graph on the left, the remaining possible edges that won't create circuits are ED and EF. They both have weight three, so it's up to me which one I want to choose. I decided to pick EF. Going back to the graph on the right, same situation. Out of the remaining edges that won't cause a loop, a circuit, we have EF and ED left. Either one has the same weight, so we can pick whichever one we want. I decided in this case to pick ED. So in the graph on the left, all the vertices are connected and we have found a minimum spanning tree. And if you add three, two, one, one, and one, you're going to get a weight of eight. In the graph on the right, all the vertices are connected. We have found our minimum spanning tree. And if you add two, one, 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 and three, you also get a weight of eight. So as long as you follow Kruskal's algorithm, you might not get exactly the same minimum spanning tree, but you will get a minimum spanning tree with the same weight. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. And if you're looking for more videos on graph theory, you can search for Miss Hearn Graph Theory.